Hola and hello to all, this is Funar. I talk about F1 a lot on this channel and this weekend we are having the second race of the second three headers of the season and welcome to the Brazilian GP circuit guide and I'm doing this for the every Grand Prix on the calendar this season so if you don't want to miss any of them please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like my video to support my channel also and let's go for the Brazilian Grand Prix Brazilian Grand Prix is held on at the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pace, which is widely known as Interlagos in Formula 1 world, in motorsport world. And the circuit started to build in 1938, but the first Grand Prix was held on in 1973. The circuit is located in the Sao Paulo, and the circuit's name, Jose Carlos Pace, was a Brazilian driver who died in a plane crash, unfortunately, rest in peace. The circuit is 4.3 kilometers and we will have 71 race laps on Sunday, which is a pretty short circuit, like the Mexican Grand Prix. The circuit is also like Istanbul circuit, it's an anti-clockwise circuit and it's a very intense circuit and old school. So personally, I like circuits so, so, so much and I, I, when I remember the Brazilian Grand Prix, there has been so many actions in throughout the years in the history of Brazilian Grand Prix. So it always brings out some kind of surprises, actions, and it's always a joy to watch a race at Interlagos. If you remember, I mentioned about the altitude of the Mexico City Grand Prix circuit. It's almost the same at the Brazilian Grand Prix. It's the second highest altitude of the calendar, actually, 1800 meters. Tainagos is a circuit with two extremes, actually. The downforce near of the car changes in a lap with like different levels of the circuit, actually, because the first and third sector of the circuit has have more straight, and but the second sector has uh, more corners, more twisty kind of circuit shape. So the downforce needing is changing in the lap itself. So teams had to decide which to use, when to use, how to use of the downforce actually for this Grand Prix. And also don't, don't forget about the altitude. It's also creates some kind of need for the downforce because of the highness of the circuit's place. There is also elevation change in Brazil, in at the Interlagos, and also tires are working very hard in the circuit. So there are lots of different stuff that teams had to think about this weekend. But the circuit allows overtaking so much because of the some straights in the circuit and also the due to braking zones. And when the DRS introduced to Formula One. The, with that, with the DRS actually, the number of overtaking got increased even more with the DRS. By having said that, the circuit has two DRS zones, one after the first corner and the second one after the 13th corner. Also, as I mentioned at the start, the circuit is very short, so because of that there might be some traffic on the circuit, which might have some problems while overtaking or on the qualifying so it's another thing to keep in mind for the teams and like these are all not enough like all the elevation change the changes in the lab and the traffic and all of the stuff i mentioned the weather is also very unpredictable at the brazil one it can shining like a star and the other second it can be rain and very hard and also at the last five Grand Prix, there has been nine safety car sessions in the race. So there is a very high chance of safety car this weekend too. And the weather is also another reason for, the, for those safety cars actually. The lap record of the Interlagos belongs to Walter Bottas from 2018 with 110.5. Overall, in all of the Brazilian Grand Prix history, Alan Prost is the name who has the most wins in this Grand Prix with six wins, 
I know, it's impressive. Uh, but in 2019, the last Grand Prix, uh, as you know, there hasn't been a Grand Prix last year because of the pandemic. Max Verstappen won in 2019, so he's the last winner of the circuit. The gap has been increased between Verstappen and Hamilton at the last race in favor of Max Verstappen at the Mexico City Grand Prix. And it's a really high tense championship going on between these two. And it's the triple header, second triple header of the season. So it's tight when you win the first race of the triple header. It's hard to catch up, I think, as, as mentally, not, I mean, I'm not talking about the car performance or something like that, but actually Max Verstappen won the first round with a like great difference at the Mexico Grand Prix with an amazing drive without any flaws that I can remember at that Grand Prix. So it's a hard job. It's a tough job for Lewis Hamilton, but he's a seven time world champion. So he knows how to handle the stress, I believe so. But also he has a very good rival this time because Max Verstappen is not a F1 world champion yet but he's handling the stress so well if you ask me with this like he's not so he doesn't have so much emotions even when he wins or lose he, he gets mad sometimes of course like with all the radio talks and stuff like that but he's human in the end so it's okay to have some emotions but he can control himself even though he's fighting for something so precious for the first time I think it's really remarkable how he can handle this kind of stress. It's it's really like hats off for that, but also still I'm I fingers crossed for a race at the last Grand Prix with the championship fight. I'm still like wishing for that. I don't care who gets to win because both of the championship chances are really special because one with the Verstappen, we will have a first time ever F1 world champion, which is a pretty special thing to watch for an F1 fan, for everyone who is interested in Formula 1 or working. I think it's always special to see some driver getting his first world championship. But in the other hand, Lewis Hamilton waiting for the eighth world breaking record F1 world championship, which is pretty spectacular if you ask me. If you, Even if even if he is not winning the eight, I think it's really remarkable he is going for it. Like, this is like history will make, history will write that kind of championship if it happens. So both of them are very special for us, for fans actually. And I'm really looking forward to that. I'm just, again, I'm wishing for a very tight championship so we can watch every race till the end with the excitement with the chance of seeing as someone taking the championship it's better that way if you ask me and as always don't forget to subscribe to my channel because there will be circuit guides for the every grand prix on the calendar this season and don't forget to like the video to support my channel also if you like them of course <laughs> anyhow see you on the next one ciao